In this episode of The Wrenchman, we find Larry in the final stages of his Volvo restoration. Larry has some concerns with the wiring and brakes, so Matt and I drop in to give him a hand. Ever had a project that stuck, stalled, or over your head? Sometimes it just takes an extra set of eyes or an extra set of hands. Enter The Wrenchman. Follow along as we travel the country getting classic cars back on the road. My name is Larry Bapp. We're in Austin, Texas, and I own a 64 Volvo 1800S. As a kid, I watched The Saint on TV, and so I always thought, that that's a pretty cool car. Somewhere around 90, early 90s, I thought, well, maybe I could find one of those. And I uh, started doing some searches. Didn't end up with one, but I did find a 122S, and I drove that uh, for, as a daily driver for a while. And then the bug sort of hit again. So I started searching again, and I found this one. Happened to be on eBay. I was watching the Super Bowl and I had seen that nobody had bid on that car. And so the, the auction ended at uh, oh, about uh, two minutes before halftime. Uh, maybe it was just the fact that everybody was engaged in the game. Um, I went and placed the bid and checked it after halftime had started and I won the thing. Good morning. Are you hey, Larry? I am Larry, yes. Hi Larry, I'm David. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, hey, Matt. Nice to meet you, Matt. Looks like you got a project here. Yeah, a bit of a one. It's uh, been a long list of things, but uh, wiring and brakes are the two key ones that have got me a little hung up right now. What's the status on the engine right now? Well, it was rebuilt, but it's never been fired up, so okay. hopefully it will run. I, I, I second that. <laughs> <laughs> that'll uh, that'll change the tone of the episode a lot. Yes, it will. <laughs> well, it was rebuilt in 2014, so it's okay. set for a bit. All right, we better get after him, Matt. Let's do this thing. I'm gonna find some jack stands, I think. Matt's gonna start working on that wiring, sorting that out. I'm kind of doing the same thing, just on the brake side. We don't have a lot, but we got to string lines, get them positioned so they're nice. We're going to use as many of the factory spots as we can, even though that we're adapting in this the dual master cylinder, we want to make sure it's still a clean, pretty uh, install. Our wires. This is what I was after. So Larry has a nice wiring diagram. Granted, it's not to scale or a routing information, but at least it tells us the colors of each of the wires and then kind of what they do. So you've got A is your charge, B is your turn, and C is your high beam light. And then you have just the instrument panel lights, light switch, ignition switch, more instrument lights. So it's going to be a little more involved than that Volkswagen, but I think we'll be all right. So I opted to, to use the big, long, straight pieces of tubing. If reason being is, in my mind, I got a lot of straight runs. It just looks better using the straight line to begin with and putting bends where I want it, opposed to trying to straighten out a big loop. The old wiring harness is still in place because we didn't want to lose the route up to the cabin area. But that also means this line, which runs up to our passenger side courtesy light, needs to be ran. And then this line right here, which runs down to the fuel sending unit, will need to be lined. So I'm going to have to pull everything out of the trunk and then start routing this new harness where the old one went. I'm at a stuck here with the brake lines right now because I need, I'd like to run the master cylinder line's going down, but I need to get the steering column in. Unfortunately, Matt needs to pull the steering column out so we can get it wired up. In the meantime, I want to get rid of this line here because we don't have a booster on this anymore. So I'm going to get this line out of the way, get it off the pulleys. Don't have to worry about it. Think about it. Get this plugged. I'm going to change these lines here while I'm thinking about it and uh, get the fuel pump in and I can make a line to go down to the fuel pump and make some progress there. All right, Matt, you said you need a hand pulling that? Yes, sir. Basically, when I tell you, give her a tug, and I'm going to feed it through on this end. Okay. And just so you know, this harness is going to keep getting bigger and bigger as you pull through. Okay. So, you see where it's coming through there? You want me to grab that finger it's coming to? Or? Yeah. Now, what's going to happen is somebody on the video is going to go, you idiot, it's supposed to go from the front to the back, not the back to the front. <laughs> I'm 
some more thing. There we go. Okay. There it is. Woo! Victory. We're through the firewall. David's just got to finish up that grommet for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a coffee break. All right, well, I'm moving along with the gauges. I've got our little courtesy light wired up, wipers, headlights. I'm working on the ignition switch. I've got a oil pressure line coming so I can keep moving on these last couple of gauges. And then uh, I'll feel pretty good about it. Here we got distributor. Hey, look at this. Hearing order here, it says 1342. Oh, maybe it goes this way. Oh yeah, 1342. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's counterclockwise. Back just a little bit. Yeah. So something like that. All right, well that's at least plugging the hole up. Well, here's the factory fuse block. Uh, it's got three fuses and a voltage regulator on it. I'm going to put it in there, wire it up, and see what happens. We don't really need this voltage regulator because he's got an alternator in there now instead of a generator, but we're still gonna put it in there and make it look right. So I'm gonna hook this ground up. We've got it wired to the point, I believe it will turn over and spark. Right, that's what we wanna see. I'm ready. Nice. Okay, try it again? Yep. Okay, I have no spark as well. Okay. Well, let's see if we got... Let me check and see, see if, if I've got, got power to, to here. Yep. Because that's a big question mark for me. We may not be getting power to the coil. Right. So this little red wire here is a jumper from the power on the fuse box up to the power side of the coil. Since I wasn't getting 12 volts, what this will do is bypass the key, basically, and allow us to see if there's spark happening, testing everything else in the ignition system. And I can hunt down the key issue, no problem. But it's 10 o'clock at night and I'd really like to check spark. Yeah. Why don't you come over here and give me a shot? Ready? Yeah. Wait, spark. spark. Okay, so everything else in the ignition system works. I just have to find that wire. Yeah. Just... What's missing. And considering how much I'm not done with the fuse box, yeah. I'm okay with that. All right, Matt, I'm gonna throw this plug back in. We got spark. Yep, I'm gonna Looks pull this good. battery cable for overnight and then let's clean up our tools and go get some sleep. Sounds like a good plan. I like that. You know, so I had it, I'm searching for all these parts and initially when I bought the car, really and truly, um, the idea was this would be a retirement project for me. When I retire, I'll redo this car. After I had all the parts, it's like, well, you know, I still have some time to retirement. So I thought, why don't I go ahead and refinish it and enjoy it while I know that I can. So I did, I started um, taking pieces off of it, set the motor off to be re rebuilt. There was some custom parts I wanted to do. And then it's like putting it all back together. And that's another project. And, and I got the engine in, I got the, the trans in, a lot of pieces installed. And I was kind of thinking, I think I'm gonna turn in one of these guys who can't finish the project. Cause the last two things were daunting were the wiring and the brakes. And so I, I knew I needed help. And uh, that's how I reached out to the wrenchman. Yeah, what a gorgeous morning, eh? Yeah. A lot nicer in that rain yesterday. Looks like we got another. Another day of Volvo here. Yeah, we worked out a list here this morning, so that ignition wiring as we checked, but we got spark, so that's a huge, huge plus. Uh, I'm gonna fight that steering some more, brake lines. I'll go ahead and tighten up some suspension while I'm under there. Yeah, please. Huh. All right. And I say that our goal is we gotta get this thing broke in today. That engine's yeah. gotta run. Yep. All right, excellent. Let's do Let's it. Let's get after it. Hey. Well, I finished up our little bracket deal for the joust lines onto the, the new suspension member. So that's all in, it's tight, shouldn't leak. And now I need to go back to square one here at the master cylinder and get the front line and the rear line hooked up and then the brakes are ready to be bled. So the reason I'm cleaning this up right now is the uh, fuse box is so corroded that the fuse isn't actually making connection from one side to the other. And putting the terminals on it isn't gonna make a good connection either. So I'm trying to clean this up so it'll actually work. Oh, 
So we're on day five of the steering support bracket and we finally got to where the steering wheel will turn. Not too bad. <laughs> All right, time for oil. We've got the Pennzoil GT Performance 25W50. This stuff's got zinc in it. So we'll put this in, we'll get a little more zinc additive, and then we'll be able to break in this engine pretty soon. This is like a puzzle with no directions. Not even a picture to cheat off of. So your, your clutch pedal runs off a, to a master cylinder, supplies po power to the slave to push the clutch opposed to mechan all mechanical linkage. Go ahead and push it and I'm gonna watch the clutch and see what it does. Okay. I gotta get where I can get some leverage on it. I need to be Shaquille O'Neal for this one. All right, here we go. Okay, stop. We might have a bad slave. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's pissing fluid out the front of it. Oh, all right, we need a lip seal to it. After, I guess, just put something underneath there to catch the fluid so it's not drooly. As we were bleeding the clutch, the slave cylinder just started puking fluid. Yeah, genius mechanic Matt realized his arm was getting wet and looked for the source of the leak. So anyhow, this is the seal. So you have a lip seal, they refer to it as lip seal, it's a one-way seal. So it push, as it pushes in, it flares out, fluid's in behind it, helps it seal, and then retracts naturally this way. The issue is probably that bore is pitted beyond use, but we'll see what happens. We're gonna try to salvage what we have, and see what we can do. I'll, I'll crawl under and install it. Okay, go ahead and try it for me. Oh, that actually feels like a clutch. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Lego. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up then. We're at the point where we can break this engine in. What we're looking for when we're breaking the motor in, we wanna get it started up as quickly as possible. get the oil moving around, get the timing set, get some idle in it or keep it running, and then we're gonna, I'm just gonna take an increase the idle up. I like to run them between 2,000 and 2,500. Basically, you don't wanna run it one position and, and break in at one RPM. The recommendation, why, it, why it's 2,000 and 2,500, that's what Camshaft manufacturers recommend, so that's where we're gonna be at. We also have added some extra zinc into the oil on top of the GT Performance Spence oil and that will just really, really uh, solidify that break-in procedure. We'll figure out how to get the rest of it adjusted. Let's shut her down. Yep. There you go. Well, was it good to hear it running? It was excellent to hear it running. It had been so long, I almost forgot what a running engine sounded like. Probably was slightly like. quieter the last time it ran, but. Yeah, but it was kind of fun because it sounded like it was a really big ass engine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's throaty with that all echoing underneath the bottom. All right, Hello, gentlemen. Here's to, the, here's to the good break in. Tidy up some tools and. Finish up some beers and call it Yeah, night. call it night. I love it. I, I saw the first episode in September of last year. It was a GTO that was done. And when I watched that video, I thought, hey, this is kind of cool. How are they picking what they're doing? So I sent an email off to the contact us button. I told a little bit of story about the car and the reply came back and said, what needs to be done to make it run? And that was a long spreadsheet. I think it got over 50 items. They only shoot for three days. And so it's like, you know, we got to make this car run in three days. And this list is pretty daunting. Can you get through more of it? And I said, yeah, I, I can't. So we, we, we talked about moving the date to in the fall. And that gave me enough time to sort of chew through that list. And I felt pretty good when the guys showed up. I really didn't know what to expect. But um, I, will, I will tell you this, both Matt and David worked their tails off. Those guys are incredible, dedicated, and they just kept pounding at it. By day two, we actually fired the thing up. I, I was amazed. I really was. I'm going to look at the fronts and have you hit them again. Robert. All right. Hey, what are you doing here this morning? You guys spend the night? <laughs> We thought about it. Our plan for the day is we got to get the, steering, the new steering wheel on, get the doors on, seats in, hood on, get a rough idea where our suspension's at. We're gonna set this on the ground, 
and uh, hopefully cruise right out that driveway. That's the, the goal. The goal today <laughs> is make the gate. Make a break for it. All right. <laughs> the goal today is being able to leave tomorrow. <laughs> We're close. It's tidying up those loose ends. I just took and spun all the way to lock to the left, all the way to the right, counting numbers of turns, and then brought it back to what should be centered in the rack. And now I'm, I'm at the point where I can tighten the steering nut down and get this wheel locked in so it's not wobbly but fully installed into those splines. So this grounds through these bolts that hold it in. Well, this one, if you watch, has popped off. So it's just going to spin instead of tightening down. And that also means it's not making a good ground here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to clean this one off as best I can. Um, check it for continuity from the bulb out from this housing here, which is your ground. And hopefully the turn signals will start working right up front, as nice as they are in the back. This has not had any alignment to it. We need to set the camber this way, caster this way. I don't have a bubble gauge with me. I don't have all the proper tools. However, with this handy dandy level on my phone, I'm gonna start at three degrees of caster. So game plan, adjust the coil, set the upper control arm for your caster and camber and get it as close as we uh, can get it. And then obviously adjust the toe. Up more. Well, Larry, I think there's one final thing to do, and that's for you to take this for a ride and tell us how it feels. That sounds like a great idea. All right, hop in. Come on, let's go. All right. Doors and everything. I know. Who would have thought? Pretty clean ride. Yeah, I think so. It's a little noisy, but we'll work that out. All right, just a, another thing to tweak. Yep. So, hey, it's been a pleasure. Thank you Enjoy. so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Really uh, fun and a big blessing. You're welcome. Awesome. Now get your daughter in that car and go for a ride. Devin, we got one more done. We did. I wasn't sure there for a while, but we did her. We made it. Nice job. Yeah. Now what? They got beer here. Oh, yeah. It was super excited to hear it start last night, but it was more fun to get in and actually drive it up and down the road today. That was just uh, it was a blast. I had my daughter in there. She was talking to the camera crew on the walkie-talkie and being a great co-pilot, it was, it was a lot of fun. So I think the next couple of things for me, like I said, are you know doing some Friday cars and coffees, maybe taking it to some local shows. And then ultimately when I get to retire, I'm gonna drive this silly thing from East Coast to West Coast.